What's up you guys? Let's talk about the Windsor market of 2020. So prices are going up like crazy right now. I think that the best way to explain it is I don't always pay for real estate. But when I do, I like to pay a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars over asking. Why? Because I can, because I can flex and get all that negative cash flow just to say, I have a house. I wrote about six offers and I got outbid on every single offer and every single offer that we've actually had, um, multiples, like over 10 to like 20. So with how things are kind of looking right now, I think everybody is actually starting to discover Windsor. Uh, we've had a pretty significant or sizable population jump. It was at like 220K at one point. Now it actually skyrocketed to like, you know, 330K. Like, solving's insane. And, you know, how I'm kind of just looking at it from like a fundamental perspective is that we're probably going to become, you know, Silicon Valley from Toronto all the way to like South Windsor. And, you know, London is a market that's starting to, you know, kind of hit above the 500k range, staying pretty pricey there. Uh, what I'm kind of just realizing is, you know, Toronto is basically buying everything within the entire area. So like, you know, moving south to southwestern Ontario, it's getting pretty crazy. And even being at Windsor, like we're right across from Detroit. I mean, yes, Detroit's pretty ghetto, but you know, looking at it from a perspective, Detroit's over here, you have Michigan up here, you have uh, Philadelphia somewhere down here. So there is a lot of potential uh, for the city overall. I'm pretty bullish on it. I mean, there's, you know, the casino there, there's a lot of jobs uh, opening over there as well. There's Quicken Loans. A lot of immigrants are actually moving over to Windsor specifically. And even if you look at, you know, the fundamentals of the city right now, I mean, everything's going pretty good for it. And, you know, I'm kind of happy to be in the market itself. Uh, yeah, you know, it could be a little frustrating to get deals here and there. I actually just lost two out of three offers for today. Um, I'll tell you about that like in a bit, but <laughs> yeah, we just got to talk about the main fundamentals. So. What I'm actually kind of noticing right now is uh, there's a lot of people specifically from, you know, outside of Toronto, outside of Canada starting to come over. I mean, there's the Hong Kong issue. I know some developers from Hong Kong who are sl uh, slowly starting to actually move over to the Windsor market. They're starting to develop, you know, new builds right there, you know, like larger uh, apartment complexes, et cetera, et cetera. So that's always a good sign because whenever the developers actually go to, you know, like a specific place, uh, you want to do that. Be you want to actually be where they are because they've already kind of done the research on that. So point being is, uh, there's a lot of upside for Windsor in you know, the near future, in my opinion. But we're also reaching a bit of a level of dumb money. So I'll kind of explain to you how the real estate usually works in Toronto, you know, bigger cities, let's say Seattle, California, Vancouver, um, you know, New York, whatever it is you want to do. But, you know, a lot of investors from these big metropolitan cities, I'm a city boy, you know, a city folk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm really like a <laughs> outskirts person, but anyways, like we kind of grew up in areas where there's a lot of people. And if you actually think about it, you know, like one whole area could actually be like a cluster of poor people. Let's say Toronto is like, you know, uh, this small area, like this whole area would have millions and millions of people. Then you have like, you know, the whole entire Ontario. It's like just clusters of people here. And then you have, you know, like scattered uh, real estate all over that are usually owned by the rich. But you know, the people usually like the cluster together. And how I'm thinking about it as well is, you know, sorry, getting back to what we we're saying is that, you know, when you're investing into large metropolitan cities, uh, usually house prices are anywhere close from, you know, like 800 to like a million in terms of uh, purchase price, right? So to get cash flow, you'd have to put a pretty sizable down payment, right? So if you actually go with the 1% rule, you know, shout out to uh, Bigger Pockets. Um, I do follow them. And you know, like if you actually follow your 1% rule per se, for Toronto, let's say, I think I talked to this uh, realtor recently. He's also an investor. He told me that a main, what is it? A main floor with an upper, uh, sorry, upstairs and uh, the lower floor as one unit. 
it actually rents for uh, sorry 3,400 plus utilities and then the basement that actually rent for 1,400 plus utilities so it's just kind of prorated based on whatever's going on the point being is meeting the one percent rule it gives you about four uh, four thousand seven hundred dollars give or take let's just round it you know like i still got mental math but uh yeah you know it is what it is so that basically leaves you with a mortgage amount of uh, 450000 So if you're buying a house for, let's say, you know, 800000 then you're going to have to put, you know, 800 minus 470. Uh, calculator. So 330 k that's usually the payment you have to put down for you to significantly cash flow. So a lot of people from these type of metropolitan cities, that's usually how they invest into real estate. So... With Windsor, the same thing's kind of happening. These people are putting a larger premium bid, um, you know, onto Windsor properties, but they're thinking, oh, you know, this property is so cheap. Maybe I could like, you know, pay like half of it in cash and have like, you know, good cash flow. So how they're thinking about it is doing it that way. And this is kind of driving up the prices a little bit. There's also a lot of, you know, new home buyers uh, that I'm kind of noticing as well. And a new home buyers, uh, you know, they're kind of tired of all these like bid wars. So <laughs> they just pay a premium on their house. It's kind of a similar situation in Toronto as well. Um, I've actually been to, you know, a couple uh, uh, houses that were actually uh, for sale. I was just looking into them just to kind of gauge what type of people are going into these properties. And most of these are just families, you know, families are willing to pay a premium. They're not really learning, you know, looking to make a buck, not really uh, looking for like a return on, you know, investment or retake. And, you know, some of these people are also the type of people that sold their Toronto home and are moving to Windsor. You know, maybe they sold their Vancouver home or a more expensive home somewhere else. Uh, and then just kind of like, you know, moving over, paying a premium there. And then just kind of living off uh, whatever the remainder of their funds are. But with how things are going now, uh, I'd say that we're getting kind of overheated in the market. There's a pretty short housing supply right there right now, too. And the funny thing I kind of noticed is like, you know, every contractor is like super busy. I mean, the contractors I deal with are uh, pretty good with me, you know, like uh, respect to my contractors. But, you know, all the other ones, like, uh, they all tell me, they're like, you know, it's it's winter season. It's like, usually it's super dead, but like, we're super busy. We're booked all the way till April. So a lot of stuff going on, uh, a lot of development. I mean, like, it just overall looking at how things are. I do think there's a lot of dumb money that's actually coming into the market, but you know, we'll see, we'll see how things actually go. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's the overall recap of the fundamental of, uh, in the Windsor markets. I guess like what we could do now is we'll talk about my deal. Uh, we'll talk about the first one and it was a townhouse, very small. I think it was about like, you know, 2,500 square feet. And the original asking price was 180K. I offered 210 and it got sold for 280 and the rent you're getting off that is like, I want to say 1700 is like the absolute max. I mean, uh, the population there at Windsor, they don't actually make that much income. So it's not really the best in my opinion, but you know, 1600 to 1500 plus utilities is more of, you know, kind of a conservative estimate and every single time you buy real estate you always want to go for like the lower end of the numbers just, you know like you have wiggle room right at least you know your worst case scenario so anyways uh yeah well let's say 15 to 1600 plus utilities i think like on that property you would only be making at best 200 dollars after capex vacancy maintenance and etc so for 280, you're not gonna make a good cash flow on that. And, uh, <laughs> oh man, I don't know. I mean, that one was just, I was a little mind blown. Uh, you know, I talked to a lot of, you know, my real estate investor friends as well. Uh, you know, might as well give a shout out to some people, you know, like Tommy uh, in a previous video, Austin. You know, we we're all we we're all talking and, you know, just in general, uh, even like Marco as well, you know, thanks for the help, Marco. Uh, yeah, but like, it's just very hard in this market overall to lock a decent deal that's on the market. So I think other routes would probably be more like off market would be a better thing. So kind of re-strategizing a little bit. 
But anyways, uh, that's the first deal. So it got sold 100k over asking. That's insane. And there were no conditions either. It was just it was just a clean offer, and that was it. So I was very surprised about that. <laughs> All right, next deal was an off market deal, uh, triplex. I didn't really feel comfortable going with. Uh, no condition offer because uh, I remember when we opened the basement, there was a bit of a, you know, a, like a steep uh, drop to the downside. So I was like, it kind of looked like they dug into something and then part of the wall was kind of like not finished. So kind of want to get an, inspect an inspector in there just to have a look to make sure there's no like structural issues. Uh, so I went with 350 with a condition upon financing, no inspection uh, condition, but more so it was just uh, that was pretty much it. So just kind of looking from the perspective, uh, the other person gave the same price, no condition, and I did not get it accepted. I mean, yeah, it's been it's been it's been kind of rough uh, for the deal seeking side. So I guess my plan right now is more so just like revamp everything, uh, you know, search a bit of different real estate markets, and we'll see how it goes. And you know, I mean. Like we kind of mentioned in terms of the cycle, it's been a pretty interesting cycle because uh, yeah, we're in a cycle of cheap debt and repo money is pumping up the stock market as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys, you know, that follow me, you guys are day traders as well. Um, you know, I've been day trading actively still. I've actually been making a pretty strong killing, especially on Tesla. Tesla's crazy. <laughs> but uh, point being is like, you know, everything is kind of nearing the bubble levels. We're talking like the dot com levels. If you look at, you know, the AMD stock, AMD is all the way up at like, you know, 50, no, sorry, like, yeah, 50 bucks, to like 49. Um, you know, what is it? Amazon all time high, Apple all time high, Shopify all time high, Tesla is like retarded, like Bitcoin, Euphoria, I'm uh, sorry, Euphoria type of thing. Uh, Toronto housing is actually increasing like crazy. Um, I also have some properties in Toronto as well. And with how those have actually been going, uh, it's not really, it's not really all that great in terms of, you know, like a return on investment type of thing. The reason why I'm kind of just holding my, uh, one of my Toronto properties per se, is more so for like, uh, you know, just, it's, it's just kind of like a way to hedge my bets because not a whole lot of people are gonna move out of Toronto. And I do think even though we head into a recession, which we're kind of already in one, um, it's not gonna be like too crazy of a drop. So that's kind of my opinion on it. But I think in terms of appreciation, my net worth probably skyrocketed by over 400K in the past couple months, I would say. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy right now, but I mean, we've had bungalows that, you know, are listed for like 600, you know, they're being bought for like 800. Like it's, it's pretty ridiculous right now, but uh, you know, so stay on the market that we're in, but if you do like these type of videos in terms of the real estate update, if you want to follow me on the Windsor journey, you know, make sure you smash uh, the like button below and subscribe. But yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. And I uh, hope this video was a little bit insightful. And, you know, for you people that are interested in investing in Windsor market, uh, it's pretty on right now, but pretty expensive. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see you guys soon.